The respiratory system first appears at the start of week four of embryonic development. What you're shown here is a sagittal section of a four-week-old embryo. And throughout the animation, the embryonic germ layers are color-coded. Okay, so blue for uh, ectoderm, yellow for endoderm, and red for mesoderm. Now, this is the cranial end, caudal end, ventral, and dorsal. Okay, this is the primordial or developing pharynx at the cranial part of the foregut, which is where our story will begin. So if we take a transverse section of this embryo here, uh, we see six pharyngeal arches, right, which you'll learn more about these coming weeks. But what I want to point out briefly um, is this hypopharyngeal eminence. This uh, is a midline swelling of the endoderm in the third and fourth pharyngeal arches. And this is going to give rise to not only the tongue, but also the epiglottis. So our story of respiratory development begins at the laryngotracheal groove uh, in the floor of the primordial pharynx, right? Remember the larynx is the upper cartilaginous segment that connects to the trachea caudally, right? So this laryngotracheal groove is located caudally between the fourth and sixth pharyngeal arches, and it's first visible ventrally at the start of week four. Now, what happens during week four is the laryngotracheal groove will evaginate ventrally or, or form an outgrowth to the foregut, okay? And we call this ventral outgrowth the laryngotracheal diverticulum. The distal portion of this diverticulum will eventually bifurcate uh, into the bronchial buds, um, which, as you know, gives rise to the respiratory tree. And the diverticulum itself is surrounded by splanchnic mesoderm, which forms the visceral pleura uh, lining the lungs. The non-bifurcating proximal portion of this diverticulum gives rise to the trachea and the larynx, right, the conducting system. And we call this portion the laryngotracheal tube. So going back to our bird's eye view, uh, what the next sequence of animations will show you now uh, is how the epiglottis and the larynx develop in relation to each other uh, over several weeks into the fetal period. So by week 10, we could see the root or the posterior one third of the tongue, which remember was formed by the hypopharyngeal eminence, uh, which also forms the epiglottis. And dorsal to the epiglottis, we see the laryngeal inlet, right, which will open ventrally into the laryngotracheal diverticulum, which you'll get a view of uh, now. Again, the distal portion of the laryngotracheal diverticulum uh, will give rise to the respiratory bud and eventually the respiratory tree. Uh, and it's all surrounded by splanchnic mesoderm. But what you're seeing here now is the same thing that you saw a few seconds ago, but this time in a sagittal view. Uh, and you're also given a transverse section or a bird's eye view uh, of what's happening here in real time. So you can appreciate the fact that when this first starts, uh, the pharynx and the laryngotracheal tube are continuous the whole way down, right? There's no wall separating the two, and obviously you don't want that. So as the diverticulum evaginates caudally, two longitudinal folds are formed from the surrounding mesenchyme in red. And these folds are called the tracheoesophageal folds. You can kind of see it here in the sagittal section. Uh, this ridge of mesenchyme here, but it's much more obvious in the transverse section. So these tracheoesophageal folds will continue to pinch, and eventually at the end of week five, they'll fuse to form uh, the tracheoesophageal septum, okay? It's named that because it partitions the dorsal esophagus from the laryngotracheal tube, uh, but the laryngeal inlet cranially, of course, remains open, okay? Now, let's look at the respiratory bud uh, ventrally. So this will branch into two primary bronchial buds, still covered, of course, by splanchnic mesoderm. By late week four, branching continues to form the secondary or the lobar uh, bronchial buds, 
then by week five, the tracheoesophageal septum forms, and three secondary bronchial buds are present on the right, and two are present on the left, which, as you know, correspond to uh, the three lobes of the right lung, right? Superior, middle, and inferior, and the two lobes of the left lung, superior and inferior, respectively. Now, by week six, there are 10 tertiary branches uh, on the right, nine on the left, each supplying a discrete area of the lung called the bronchopulmonary segment, right? And as the bronchial buds branch, they extend laterally into the pericardioperitoneal canal. Uh, they impinge on that lateral space that they're in more and more, right? Which brings us to the next chapter of this story, which has to do with splanchnic mesoderm. So throughout all of this, while this is all happening, the developing respiratory bud remains covered by splanchnic mesoderm, right? I've brought this up a million times because it's really important. <laughs> the splanchnic mesoderm will form not just the cartilage and the muscle and the blood vessels and connective tissue that are present in the respiratory tract, it'll also form the visceral pleura that lines the surface of the lung. Now, the outer wall of the pericardioperitoneal canal, the space that this all happens in, uh, that outer wall is lined by somatic mesoderm, and this gives rise to the parietal pleura, right? We borrow the term parietalis from Latin. It means belonging to the wall. So the parietal pleura lines the outer thoracic wall, and it's continuous with the visceral pleura that lines the bronchial buds, okay? They're connected. So if you follow my pointer here, the visceral pleura directly lining the bronchial buds will continue, continue, continue. And then as it gets closer to the hilum of the lung, it'll reflect, right? And as soon as it reflects and starts lining the wall, it continues as the parietal pleura. So the two are continuous, but they do have different um, embryological origins. Okay, during weeks five to six, as the bronchial buds grow, what will happen is the splanchnic mesoderm, or visceral pleura, will push into the somatic mesoderm, or parietal pleura, uh, of the lateral thoracic wall, right? And the resulting space in between the two pleural layers is what we call the pleural cavity. So for the last chapter of the story, we'll talk about the endoderm, right, which gives rise to the very important pulmonary epithelium. So development of the respiratory passages is divided into four periods. First, we have uh, the pseudoglandular period, which is non-functional from weeks 5 to 17. Uh, some sources say weeks 6 to 16. Uh, regardless, pseudo is an acronym that describes something that's uh, pretending to be something that it's not, <laughs> right? So in this stage, uh, the bronchioles look like glands, but they're actually a bit of a fraud at this stage because they're lined by a cuboidal epithelium, right? And if you notice that um, the capillaries, they're very far away from the bronchiole itself. And so no gas exchange actually happens here. And then, from weeks 16 to 26, uh, we then have the canalicular stage. So here, the lumen of the bronchi uh, get larger, and the blood vessels get excited, and they grow a lot more. Uh, what's not shown in this animation here for you, though, is uh, that type 2 nemocytes start to produce surfactant by around weeks 20 to 22 uh, to decrease the surface tension of the fluid covering the surface of these saccules. Right, to prevent them from collapsing, uh, which is a huge problem. So if you can imagine uh, a Ziploc bag that you fill with water, and then you dunk the water out, uh, you're left with an empty plastic bag that's wet inside. Right Now, when you have a wet surface that's lined by something thin, uh, it tends to collapse. Right? So the layers of the Ziploc bag are going to want to cling to each other because of the surface tension. Right, The water molecules are attracted to each other. And now you got to pry the bag open. <laughs> so same thing happens with these terminal sacs and with your alveoli. They're thin, thin surfaces that are wet. Uh, and to prevent them from collapsing, type 2 nemocytes will produce surfactant to keep the spaces open. Uh, at first, they don't really do a good job. Uh, but by around week 26, uh, they know the drill and they're much better at it. Uh, and in fact, this is actually why a premature viability is considered around week 26. 
um, because surfactant levels have typically risen to a point where breathing is possible without medical support. And then during the terminal sac period, from weeks 26 up till birth, more terminal sacs bud off of the respiratory bronchioles, which increases surface area for gas exchange. Uh, and importantly, you can see now that the capillaries are inching closer and closer to the terminal sacs, which establishes the very important blood-air barrier. And finally, we have the alveolar stage from the late fetal period all the way up to eight years of age. Uh, and this is when the lungs become functional. So pulmonary epithelium and the capillaries get thinner, surfactant production increases, and everything becomes more conducive for gas exchange.